We knew it was going to happen eventually, but it happened now. Having a conservative Supreme Court finally caught up with us, it appeared to not do that in the the DACA ruling, although Trump basically just has to resubmit his paperwork for that one and then they win. So um, it didn't catch up to us then. It didn't catch up to us on LGBTQ rights, how now... Trans people are protected under non-discrimination clauses just as much as gay people and just as much as black people. and So that's a positive thing. So we got lucky with a few Supreme Court decisions. We got lucky. Call it what it is. But now we're right back to unlucky. And I expect a lot more decisions like this, given that the court is definitely leaning conservative. The U.S. Supreme Court narrowed the separation of church and state in a major ruling on Tuesday by endorsing Montana tax credits that helped pay for students to attend religious schools, a decision paving the way for more public funding of faith-based institutions. In a 5-4 decision, the court backed a Montana program that gave tax incentives for people to donate to a scholarship fund that provided money to Christian schools for student tuition expenses. The justices sided with three mothers of Christian school students who appealed after Montana's top court invalidated the tax credit for violating the state's constitution, the state constitution's ban on public aid to churches and religious entities. The court's five conservatives were in the majority and the four liberal justices dissented. Chief Justice John Roberts, who authored the ruling, said a state need not subsidize private education, but once a state decides to do so, it cannot disqualify some private schools solely because they are religious. They also say voiding a taxpayer program merely because it can be used to fund religious entities violated the U.S. Constitution's protection for the free exercise of religion. Absurd. Absurd. Because you can still practice your religion however the hell you want to practice your religion. You just can't get funding from the state for it. Now, listen. There's one way to try to overturn this. There's one way to try to overturn this. You know what that is? Set up a situation where tax money goes towards an Islamic religious school. I think the Supreme Court would switch on that one. I think they would say, you know what? Secularism is actually very important. Separation of religion and state is actually very important. Because under our Constitution, the Establishment Clause says, you know, you have freedom of religion, but the government can't favor one religion over any other kind of religion. So under this logic, you could have tax money going towards a Mormon school, tax money going towards a Scientologist's school, tax money going towards an Islamic school. So, how much you want to bet if the facts of the case were not a Christian school, but a Muslim school, all of a sudden they would have flipped and you probably would have had an overwhelming majority against the tax money going towards a Muslim school. Because people are going to rightly say, hey man, this is my tax money. I'm not Muslim. Why should I have to fund a school that teaches something I don't agree with? That's not secular knowledge. That's something that's unique. It's a specific religious viewpoint. I, why do I, I have to fund that? Why do I have to fund that? That's ridiculous. I don't have to fund that. According to our constitution, separation of church and state, I don't have to fund that. Well, they said that when it comes to this Christian school, actually, yes, you do. You do have to fund it. And their point was, hey, you know, you have some tax credits that go towards private schooling. So tax money doesn't have to go towards private schooling, but in if people decide that tax money can, in their respective states or localities, go to private schooling, well, then you can't discriminate based on, you know, the different kinds of schools that there are. So if it's Christian school, you can't say, we, we're not going to fund that because it's religious. Because you already said you want to fund private schools, so you, that means it includes religious schools. This is utter nonsense. This is a complete... It's so funny because Republicans usually make the argument... That, oh, we believe in originalism or textualism. They have a couple different, you know, ways of describing it. But the idea is, us conservatives look at the Constitution as it was written and interpret it as the founders meant. Whereas it's supposed to be, the, the left-wing mindset or the liberal mindset is supposed to be that the Constitution is this living, breathing document that evolves over time. And whatever you can interpret you know, the Constitution as to allow us to evolve, that's how you interpret it. 
So you, it's almost like you read the Constitution and give yourself wiggle room to adjust with the times, basically. That's the left-wing or liberal approach. The, the conservative is, we interpret it as written. Well, as written, it is crystal clear. There's no way you could read the Constitution and think it's okay for tax money to fund religious schools. No way! No way! We're a deeply secular government. We have separation of church and state. This is a clear violation of the Establishment Clause of the Constitution. Because you're favoring Christianity over other kinds of religions. You don't believe me? Okay. Then set up an Islamic school, set up a Scientologist's school, or any of the thousands, over 4,000 religions that are in existence. Set up a school that has a religion as its basis, and go ahead, fund it with tax money and see how long that lasts before the state says no way. They would overturn it pretty much immediately, but the Christian schools get away with it. Why? Because the Christians are the majority in this country. That's why. And the people, many of the people on the Supreme Court are Christians. That's why. Because they go, I agree with this. It's, it's what I was raised in, so I'm going to allow it and come up with a BS rationale. This is nonsense, man. In fact, I have to admit, I'm surprised. I would have guessed, if anything, on the LGBTQ case... They would have ruled against trans rights. That's what I would have guessed this this court would have done. But I would have guessed that on this one, they would have said, no, we can't have tax money funding a Christian school. Are you crazy? That's obviously against the Constitution. But they didn't. They flipped it. <laughs> the LGBTQ one, they believed in trans rights. Good. But this one, they decided the wrong way. So now, and again, the worst problem here is the precedent. Because now you open the door. Well, now people are going to take tax money and throw it to all sorts of religious initiatives. And what the hell's, you know, who the hell's going to stop them when the Supreme Court just said, no, it's totally constitutional to fund Christian schools with tax money. Who's going to stop them? So who's going to stop them when tax money now go towards, you know, Christian drug rehab centers, which are probably using anti-scientific methods of trying to cure people from addiction? Who's going to stop them? Who's going to say, no, 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 you can't have tax money fund that because it's religious? Who's going to stop them? Nobody's going to stop them. So now you open the door. See, this is this is a backdoor way to get to theocracy, is what this is. This is a ruling that absolutely would have been welcomed in Iran or Saudi Arabia or any country with deep theocratic elements. Because it's a way to have our money, our collective tax money, go towards a specific kind of religious ideology, which is obviously totally unacceptable. But now you've opened the door, you've laid the precedent down, there's going to be tax money going towards all, all sorts of religious initiatives. It used to be an obvious no-brainer that that can't be the case. Now they're going to, they've left wiggle room, and I think it's going to get worse and worse.